Hey guys, what is up? This is Gothcat finally back from yet another unintended hiatus. I know it's fucking annoying. Um, yeah, um, I don't know if you read the uh, discussion, but um, probably didn't. Um, I had actually been a, on a, a job search for like, I don't know, six, seven weeks, and uh, I finally found another job, so... Well, I'm still working on a few things, you know, I do have, you know, at least a little bit more spare time so I can at least occasionally, um, bring up some videos, um, I have no idea how often I will, um, upload them, but, yeah, um, so yeah, why am I actually making a finale for this series? Just because closure. That's the, uh, that's the main reason, I just want closure, you know, I just want to know that you know, I'm done with the series, um, uh, I might bring it back, um, uh, might bring up, uh, some of the, uh, skip stories, or go for some of my, uh, favorites someday, but for now, you know, this is it, this is done, we're done, okay. Um, as for, uh, the final story I will, will, will be featuring, um, it's a little, um, video game creepypasta, um, that, uh, might have been featured on a couple of uh, years old uh, creepypasta lists, even if it's not that well known. It's called uh, JVK116C.ESP. I have no idea if you're familiar with that, but it was um, highly praised um, years ago, maybe like five, no, um, maybe like uh, three to five years ago. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it was a video game creepypasta that was, uh, somewhat, um, well-known, but not so much now. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna read the story and, uh, give my two cents on it, and, uh, I hope you enjoy. Some people might recall some momentary buzz caused a couple of uh, years ago by a particularly odd uh, Morrowind mod. The file name was jvk116c.esp. It was never posted on any of the larger Elder Scrolls communities, usually just smaller boards and uh, role-playing groups. I know in a few cases, uh, rather than being posted, it was sent via PM or email to a chosen few. It was only up for a few days, to the best of my knowledge. It caused a buzz because it was a virus, or seemed to be. If you tried to load the game with the mod active, it would hang at the initial load screen full for a full hour and then crash to the desktop. If you let it get that far, you, your install of Morrowind, along with any save files you had, would become completely corrupted. No one could figure out what the mod was trying to do, since it couldn't be opened to the construction set. Eventually, warnings were distributed not to use it if you found it, and things died down. About a year later, in a mod board I used to frequent, someone popped up with the mod again. He said he was PM'd by a lurker who deleted his account immediately after sending. He also said that the person advised him to try playing the mod through DOSBox. For some reason, this worked. Sort of. The game was a bit laggy, and you couldn't get into the options, load game, the console, or really anything else other than the game itself. The quick save and quick load hot buttons worked, but that was it. And the quick save file seemed to be just a part of the game files, so you couldn't get so you couldn't get at it anymore. 
Some speculated that the change game used an older graphics renderer, making DOS box necessary, but it didn't look any different. This part I can speak about from personal experience. When you start a new game in JVK, as the board came to call it, once you left the starting bit in the census office and came into game proper, the game proper, the first thing you'd notice is the prophecy has been severed box opens up. This is because every single NPC having to do with the main quest is dead, with the sole exception of Yagrum Bagarn, the last of the Dwemer. The corpses never despawn, so you can go check on all of them. In effect, you begin in a world that is doomed to start with. Second thing you notice is that you're losing health. It's only a bit, but it keeps happening, a little bit at a time. The longer you stay in one place, the quicker it seems to occur. If you let this health loss kill you, you'll find the cause. A figure we came to call the Assassin, because he seems to wear a, a retextured version of the Dark Brotherhood armor from Tribunal, even though the expansions don't work with JVK. It's all black, completely untextured, like he's just a hole in space. The way he moves gave me quite a start. First time I saw him sculling around my dead body. He crawls inhumanly on his hands and feet, his arms and legs splayed out like a spider. You'd usually only see him after death, crawling around in a rear body just before the reload box popped up. Occasionally you could catch a glimpse of him darting around a corner or crawling on a wall or ceiling. It made the game very difficult to play at night. Other than that, the only noticeable difference is at not that at night, at random intervals, every NPC in the game will go outside for a few minutes. During this time, the only thing they will say when hailed is, watch the sky. Once they return to their normal behavior, that like normal though. After a while, a player on the board discovered a new NPC named Tyrus, a male Dunmer in the temple at Ghostgate. Two things are notable with this NPC. First is his robe, a unique article of clothing that was lovingly rendered with twinkling stars all across it, looking like a torn off chunk in the night sky. The second is that all of his dialogue, in addition to showing up in the dialogue boss, box, is voiced. You can skip it if you wish, but it all sounds like it's in the default male Dunmer voice. Some people said that they thought the voice was slightly different, but it was a very, very good imitation. I won't go into the details, but the quest line he sends you on has to do with a dungeon referred to simply as the Citadel. Up to this point, the uh, quests were all of a fairly generic Discover the Secrets of the Ancients bent. The entrance to this dungeon is on a small island far to the west of Morrowind proper. I eventually discover that if you use a scroll of Icarian flight at the westernmost point in the, on the main landmass and jump directly west, you end up almost exactly at that island. Even though the dungeon is called the Citadel, it goes straight down. It dwarfs any other dungeon, both in size and difficulty. From a natural cave area, you'll proceed down into an ancestral tomb looking area, then a Daedric ruin area, and then a Dwemer ruin area. I made it down to the Dwe Dwemer ruins before I quit. The creatures here were strong enough that a level 20 character would have to take care, and since you can't use the console in JVK, level 20 took a while to get to. Since the quick save and quick load are your only options, it's all too easy to get yourself into an impossible situation too. I did, and I just didn't have the energy to start over. Now, what I'm telling you is based on what those few who went further reported. Past the Dwemer Ruins, you find yourself in a level like the Dwemer Ruins, but darker. 
Rather than the usual bronze, all the surfaces, including those of the creatures, are black. Sounds of machinery are loud there, and grow louder still, randomly. There's also steam or fog everywhere, limiting your vision to about 10 in-game feet or so. If you can make it through all this, you will reach all that those who found it called the portrait room. Like the fire and torches or other effects from early 3D games, this room has, has a picture of frames that always face directly at you, no matter how you look at them. The images in the frames were always randomly chosen images from your My Pictures folder. On the board, the, the ones who got there had some fun posting screenshots of the portrait room with various pictures in the frames. Usually porn, of course. At the end of the hall was a locked door. After admitting defeat and returning to Tyrus, everyone just found him saying, Watch the sky, in his gravely voice. What's more, nobody else in the game would say anything. There was just a completely blank dialogue box with no options at all. They wouldn't even rattle off the usual canned audible greetings. The only exception was at night. Whenever they'd uh, go out for a few minutes, they'd still repeat it. Watch the sky. At this point, one of the players, a friend of mine from the board, noticed, and the few others who got this far agreed, that the night sky was no longer the usual night sky of Tomrio. It changed to a depiction of a real night sky, and it moved. From this point on, everything is based on what this one person reported. Eventually, he got himself kicked from the board, but I kept in contact with him for as long as he responded. According to him, based on the constellations of plants, the sky started around February 2005. If you died, loaded, or went back into the citadel, it would start over. When the usual day sky graphics took over, the movement would be suspended until the stars appeared again. In the space of a single night, everything would move about two months' worth. Since the timescale of JVK was more or less that of the standard game, that meant that a bit less than an hour was equal to a 24-hour period. He became convinced that the door would open based on some kind of celestial event. Of course, waiting for that meant leaving the game running. Of course, that meant that the game couldn't be left unattended, thanks to our old friend, the Assassin. My friend decided he'd hang out for the whole day, just to see if anything happened. That would be about a year's worth of movement. Here's the post he made at the end of this uh, experiment. I loaded it in Sedanin, where all starts. It wasn't too bad, just had to check in now and then to move around and heal to make sure I wasn't dying. But check it out, 24 hours exactly in, and the assassin learned a new trick. He screams. I was reading, and all of a sudden this crazy loud shriek just about makes me crap myself. It's like something out of a horror movie. I look it up, and there he is, just crashed down right in front of me. Of course, the second I moved my character, he ran off. When I went back to the portrait room, the door was still locked. Damn it, damn it, damn it! A bit later, he came to the decision that he needed to wait three days. Three years! The PM advising us to try DOS box showed up in February of 2008, was his reasoning anyway. After the first shriek, the assassin stops hitting you out of nowhere. Now he'll shriek, and if you don't move for a few seconds after that, he hits you. I think whoever made the mod was trying to help... Uh, at night, I've got my headphones on, and it was just I was just kind of dozing off the, when he wakes me up with a shriek. I jiggle the mouse, and I'm good. That post was two days in from his laptop. Once it was over, fuck, 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 I was so fucking done. So, wait, the three days, right, and right after the fucking assassin made me jiggle the mouse, he shrieks again. So, I look... And everyone in town is outside. They're all saying, watch the sky. I don't see anything, though. But then the game starts getting dark. Like, really dark. I turn the brightness all the way 
on my monitor, and I can still barely see. I can see other people in the game, little figures running around the distance, just running back and forth. If I try to get close, they run off. Now, I was trying to sleep, so lights are off, and this is kind of creepy. I don't want to get up to turn on my light just because I don't want to miss anything, but nothing fucking happens. Eventually, I go back to the Citadel, it's still dark, and I gotta swim, and the whole time, I can see all these guys swimming all around me, just, just barely there. I make it a citadel, and it's normal light inside, and I get worried. Sure enough, the porter door is still fucking closed. I go outside, and it's all starting over. So that's it. I'm fucking going to bed, and I'm fucking done. The end. After that, two things happen. First, another of the people who got to the porter room claimed that the assassin was showing up in his regular Morrowind game. Quick explanation, if you reinstall Morrowind to a different folder, you could have a normal uh, Morrowind install along with JVK. He himself chalked it up to an overactive imagination at first, but he reported a couple of really big scares with the black figure crawling right at him, or seeing it waiting for him just around a corner before scuttling off. Another of those who reached the portrait room started a regular Morrowind game, but never saw for sure. Just It was just a couple of maybes late at night and always at a distance. The second is that my friend started really getting really abusive and short-tempered on the board, though he stopped talking about David K entirely. It got so bad that he soon kicked off. He was soon kicked off. I didn't hear anything from him for a couple of days, weeks after that, so I sent him an email. This was part of his reply. I know I shouldn't, but with classes out, I've got some time, so I started JVK up again. It's almost 2011, and I think I've got the sleep madness. But this, but stuff is happening. It's still dark. Once it gets dark, it never gets any lighter. It stays like that. The people moved a few months ago. Everyone in Sedanin just went to that little bandit cave and moved in. They killed the bands inside and now they're just standing around outside. They don't see say anything anymore. They don't do anything. When you click on them, I quick saved and killed one and he just stood there until he died without fighting back. It's like that everywhere. You have to walk since the quick travel people are all in caves now too, but all the cities and towns are just deserted. All the people are in caves and tombs. Everyone in Vivek is down in the sewers. I'm going to go skate next. I want to see if Tears is still there. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what he says when I get there. I replied and said I wanted to see what he said too, and wait a day. When I didn't get a reply, uh, I mailed him again, and a couple of hours later he sent back. Sorry, I totally forgot. It's so it's 2014 now since. It's always night, the stars are always moving. The whole screen is dark, but you can still see the brightest stars moving around. Cheers was gone, everyone in Ghostgate is, was gone. I don't know where they went. They're not in any of the nearby caves, but there's new stuff. People still don't say anything, but their eyes are bleeding. It's so dark that even with a light spell, you have to get right up against them to see, but... There they are, little dark streaks coming down from their eyes. You gotta be getting close. I know this is stupid, and there's no way the payoff is going to be worth it, but I just want to be able to say I stuck it out. I got that one during the day. Later that night, I got a follow-up email. Some of the plants aren't moving right. It's pissing me off. If this keeps up, I won't be able to keep track anymore. It's almost 2015 now, I think. Fuck you know, I just now notice that there aren't any monsters anymore either. I'm I'm just I'm completely alone outside now. The main quest people's bodies are still lying around though. I went to check on them. I don't need headphones anymore, so I just leave them off. When he shrieks, it's like he's screaming right into my ear. I think I even kind of anticipated. He's around a lot more now, a lot closer. He's different from the other people who start showing up, remember? They keep running around, just where I can barely see them. 
I have to admit, it's kind of creepy at night. Sometimes when I go to the bathroom or whatever, I swear I can see something out of the corner of my eye. Keep, I'm keeping all the lights on now. I sent him a letter jokingly telling him to get some real sleep and left it at that. Two mornings later, I found this in my email. It was the last thing I got from him. After this, he stopped responding completely. I just go up from a fucked up dream, I think. The assassin shrieked at me, and when I opened my eyes, he was right there, crouching over me. His arms and legs were longer, more like a spider as I tried to push him away, but when I touched him, my hands just went inside and I couldn't get them loose again, like he was made of tar or something. Then I woke up. I thought he was gone, but when I looked around at the monitor, I wasn't where I was. I was in the corpusarium with Yagrum. For once, the light was okay, and I could see him all bloated on those mechanical spider legs. I sat down on the computer, and he started talking to me. Not a box, but really talking to me in Cheris' voice. He knew things about me. He told me things that I never told anyone, some things I totally forgot about. He told me that almost nobody has made it this far, and that the door would open up soon. I just had to hang on a little while longer. He said I'd know when it was time. He said I might be the first one to see what was inside. And then I woke up for real, but I was at the computer. I still wasn't where I was. I'm swimming out to the Citadel Island, and I can hear this tapping. It's at my window. It's oh, it's over on the left, so I'm sending you this because I left my laptop by my bed to the right. Just a little tap tap tap, like he's knocking his finger against the glass. I might still be dreaming now. So I guess that's the end of the story. I know there's a few other stories flying around about the mod, but this is the only I know is true as far as it goes. I deleted my JVK copy of the game pretty much right after I gave up, but I'd like to get the mod again. If anyone has a copy of the file, I'd like to see some of this for myself. Okay, so this was the last story uh, for the series. Totally overrated. Um, sorry I didn't sound... Uh, as you can see, I'm probably a bit rusty. Um, and I guess my delivery was a little bit deadpan. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, so yeah, I've been feeling like shit, so I guess it's hard to really, um, act like you're enthused when you're not. Um, anyway, to the, uh, story itself, um, it does actually have a, a very good foundation, um, unlike, uh, Jathan Killer, which had, a uh, slight potential, um, this story actually had uh, a few structures, definitely one of the better stories in this series. Um, at the same time, there are areas where it falls flat. Um, of course, there's a bit of dialogue, uh, there's a bit of, uh, there's a few sentences that uh, don't make any sense in their wording. Um, and especially the end, <laughs> where they're like, okay, so that's the end of the story, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think there's, <laughs> there, I'm pretty sure there are more subtle ways to uh, end your story, um, even if it's not gonna look like, you know, a polished piece, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a little, uh, maybe something a bit more subtle like, you know, uh, so far that's all I found, yada yada yada, all that stuff, uh, what else do I have to say, um, um, going back to the, uh, foundation itself, you know, um, you know, it did, uh, it did progress, um, and there were, uh, some, uh, there are, there is a bit of room for improvement, but, you know, you have the indicators, you know, this is how much I personally played through, this is how much other people played through, and then this one guy who, uh, went this far, um, Uh, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess the reason why it's been in, uh, 
it was in top 10 lists years ago. It's probably because of this uh, solid foundation. Um, uh, at the same time, uh, there's... <laughs> okay, first, uh, a, couple, a couple of cliches. Um, near the end, there was like people with dark eyes with blood running down, which is unfortunately extremely common. And it's kind of like hyper-realism in creepypastas. You know it's going to happen. And then the part in the end where this one guy that had a lot of dedication um, was dreaming about this game, you know? Um, and then here's tapping noises in real life. Um, I think there were uh, other ways that, um, it, that could have been implemented. You know, um... Maybe go into a little more detail on what the game was uh, telling this person. Um, you know, things that they haven't supposedly haven't told anyone, I think. Um, not 100% sure about that, but the cliches are there. Um, there is plenty of room for improvement, but I have to say it's one of the least terrible uh, stories that I've read in the series, so... Uh, that's my final review. Um, hopefully I will... Okay, so right now I'm going to be... Uh, okay, so like I said in my discussion, uh, I'm going to goof around for a little bit and then uh, come up with a uh, new... Um, let's see... Uh, a new lineup for my channel. Um, I'm still going to continue... Uh, 120 days of Sodom at some point, um, but I'm just not sure when. Okay, so hopefully things will get at least close to normal, you know. Um, this is Gothcat signing out. Thank you and goodbye.